to start off building a Starship a replica, I'm going to add some a probe core and some batteries, cover it with a fairing, and uh, start building the cargo bay. I'm going to use a... Uh, this isn't technically accurate, but I'm just going to use that cargo bay for smaller payloads. So this would be a version that would land on like Mars, or the Duna in this case, and carry some internal volume as well as uh, passengers. So I'm going to use these uh, Bobcat engines from the DLC and the Cheetah engines also from the DLC for the analog to the Raptor and uh, Raptor Sea Level and Raptor uh, vacuum versions of the engines, which is for this size of tank pretty much the closest you can get with these um, KSB engines without mods for the engines themselves. I'm also going to add a docking port so I can do on over refueling. So as you can see, it retracts inside the uh, bearing or skirt at the bottom. For the flaps, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna use some of the uh, DLC uh, breaking ground robotics parts. So you can see I'm adding um, some of the alligator hinges for uh, the upper flaps here. The interesting thing to note here is, uh, well, I'm going to be adding uh, some fins, but those aren't actually going to be used for anything because I'm going to turn off their, their pitch and yaw control. Theoretically, I could use it for some SES assist on these, but the interesting thing here is I'm actually going to be controlling the, uh, the alligator hinges directly rather than uh, coding it for, it for the SES to take care of, which is probably the easiest way to do it because using like the uh, controllers with the uh, breaking ground robotics ports would be quite a lot of work to get SES to control it. So the easy way to do it is just control them manually. So you'll see later when I fly it how I land it using the controlling the flaps manually. So just finishing up the flaps here, I'm going to add some uh, struts on the lower ones. The upper ones don't really need struts because they don't endure a lot of aerodynamic stresses, but the lower one has a lot of uh, <laughs> drag on it, a lot of aero forces. So I'm going to add a lot of struts to strengthen the connection on both ends of the hinges to the vehicle and to the flaps themselves. The uh, it's slightly annoying with the cargo bay because they don't have spherical or circular ones or cylindrical, perfectly cylindrical uh, cargo bays. Instead, they have them narrow or taper, which is slightly annoying, but. Starting work on the uh, the payload, I'm going to use a 10 ton payload, which isn't very much, but honestly for the Starship, it's about payload volume. So mining equipment, that kind of thing, for uh, the, this size. So it isn't, I need to uh, use some robotic parts for creating a, uh, a opening fairing at the top, rather than a cargo bay if I actually wanted more internal volume. But starting on the uh, first stage, I'm centering the probe core and batteries between the decoupler and the tanks. And I'm going to be using air brakes to help slow down these large tanks, which uh, uh, with, the extra, with the fuel coming down to land are quite heavy, so they don't tend to deaccelerate due to drag as quickly as smaller reusable first stages would deaccelerate. And as you can see, I'm using more Bobcat engines, gratuitous, gratuitously uh, merging nozzles together, which is, I mean, it's kind of cheating, but whatever, it makes it look a lot better. But in this case, you can see I'm adding core engines. I'm going to toggle the outside ring so when I come down to land, I'm only using the inside for engines. 
lots of um, landing gear. These small landing gear are pretty weak, so they can easily break if there are too few or uh, topple over if there are too few. But that's pretty much done. I have the payload, upper stage flaps, first stage control and uh, descent. I mean, it add action groups for the upper stage engines, so I can toggle them individual the groups individually. And we're ready to launch. For this, I'm going to be using a boost back burn, which is quite wasteful, but honestly, it's my only option for a correctly sized first stage because with so much mass on the upper stage the uh, first stage has to be very large to boost it all the way over to the peninsula over the ocean to land the first stage so rather than building a giant first stage i'm just going to do a pretty wasteful boost back burn but that's what spacex is planning to, to do anyway with boost back burns to land on the launch pad Currently, I guess they're planning to catch the uh, first stage by the uh, by the grid fins rather than land using landing legs, but that's a bit difficult to do unless you want to do precision landings, which require mods for precision control. But uh, in this case, I'm just going to be landing these the first stage manually, so non-precision landing. But generally, in the, vic the vicinity of the um, of the Kerbal Space Center. So switching to the second stage, I'm going to go ahead and do an orbital insertion burn. In this case, I'm going to be using pretty little of my onboard propellant. So, as you can see, I would need to launch two of these to refuel it, so I could go land on the Mun or Duna but I'd still be able to, um, I, ne I need to add crew cabins for that if I wanted to land Kerbals along with some payload. And I need to uh, add mining equipment to my uh, cargo bay, somehow uh, lowering it down onto the ground, which is gonna be the tricky part for doing these flights in the future to Duna, where some in-situ refueling would need to be done. But switching back to the first stage, I'm going to go ahead and start my landing run. In this case, it takes quite a few attempts to get it to land. So I'm going to fast forward th through those attempts. It's pretty important to quick save so you can uh, try several times in case you fail on the first landing run. Especially if you're using only the inside core engines to land rather than all engines at once, because with the core engines running it's easier to throttle, but it's more difficult to judge when you need to start your landing burn because you don't have as much margin of error with the throttle capability. So as you can see, I, uh, this is I try like four times before I'm able to successfully do it. But things to note are you can control where you land by your when in your pro flight profile, you deploy your air brakes. So if you deploy them early, you tend to slow down faster. So you can use that time to maneuver generally towards the area you want to land in, in case you need to avoid uh, sloped areas. You'll also want your uh, altimeter in terrain mode rather than with reference to sea level, because the the area, uh, the area here around the KSC is raised slightly, about 70 meters or, or something like that, off the sea level. Or as I say, 30 or so meters. The launch pad is slightly higher. But in this case, you can see that the RCS is really helping to stop the stage from tipping over, which with the smaller relative landing gear is a bit of a problem with larger stages. Switching to the second stage, I'm going to circularize my orbit. I'm slightly suborbital in this case, so I need to do a circularization burn before I release the payload. Uh, so I'm going to toggle the vacuum optimized engines to do my orbit raising burn. 
In this case, I go a little high, but it doesn't really matter because this is only a mock payload. Obviously, if I were doing this seriously, I wouldn't have all that empty space in the nose. And instead of an inert tank, I'd be boosting up satellites. So, Starlink analog satellites in this case. So, a cluster of like 400 satellites. Right now, I'm doing the uh, re entry burn so I can lower my uh, perigee down into the atmosphere. And then from there, I can just glide around to the opposite side, in this case, the daylight side, to start my landing burn or uh, re-entry approach. In this case I'm going to select the uh, hinges and prepare to control them manually. In this case the RCS clusters really help to um, stabilize the vehicle to get it into position. And the vehicle is reasonably stable in, with if you slightly uh, hinge the uh, flaps slightly because then it creates a uh, the center of pressure is slightly backwards from the belly uh, point uh, uh, position so you can see I'm actively maneuvering the vehicle into a upwards position to prepare for uh, the belly flop in this case, it gets some taking use, yeah, gets some getting used to to uh, learn how to manually operate the hinges to keep it stable. But in, using uh, SES in conjunction with RCS really helps. And what you can do is you can toggle SES on and off using the key F, and that allows you to get a sense if you toggle it for a split second what tendency the vehicle has. So if you think uh, you tend to, uh, you're nose heavy or you're tail heavy, you can toggle it on and off and then adjust the flaps to judge what your uh, target angle should be for your upper or lower hinges. But yeah, from here it's pretty straightforward. You just try to maintain a sideways position, or if you're trying to maneuver for a precision landing, you can nose forward slightly so that you stay in the upper atmosphere for longer. And that allows you some pretty good cross-range capability. Also, it helps for high-speed entries where you need to bleed off more speed in the upper atmosphere. From here, it's pretty simple just a approach all the way down to a landing burn where you flip around 